Afternoon, hello, and welcome to the Student Hub Live. I'm so chuffed to see so many of you here today. Um, I'm Karen Foley, and uh, I'm in West Wales at the moment, and it's a miserable day here. There's drizzle coming down, um, and it's January, and uh, I think it's uh, what people say is the most depressing day of the year, but, what a lovely place to be at with everybody here. We've got over 200 new students who are so excited, I think, I hope, um, to be uh, starting their learning journey with the Open University. And we've also got some very uh, seasoned students here today um, to meet and to welcome you um, to our wonderful virtual learning environment. So, this is Student Hub Live. For those of you who haven't come along before, um, it's the Open University's platform um, for facilitating academic community. And what we do is we have a virtual space where people can come and have a cuppa and meet so many academics and other students from our fabulous institution. And we do heaps of events. This is the first one for new students, but on module start day, we have some workshops in Adobe Connect, which is the OU's tutorial platform. And I'm also planning out Freshers' event, which is on the 1st of February, and we have plenty in store for both new and continuing students. We'll show you how everything works, but most of all, I'm looking forward to playing our Wheel of Ologies quiz, um, which is going to be super exciting. So do check out our Student Hub Live website and uh, make sure that you've got your free ticket for the events that suit you, and know that throughout your academic um, journey with the Open University, we'll run loads of additional free extracurricular workshops and events like this uh, to supplement your skills and support you in your learning but most of all to give you a chance to talk to other people so i see you've all been introducing yourself in the chat you've been talking about where you are what modules you're doing and i saw some time ago that dennis said that he was perhaps the most senior of everyone here today although there have been lots of different ages banded around but i hope that you're all getting to enjoy and meet other people now, the chat is your place to talk, um, and we have the wonderful Lynn who is moderating the chat from our hot desk, who I'll introduce you to, uh, in, uh, well, now actually. Uh, Lynn, how are you today, and um, what's the weather like where you are, and how are all our wonderful people uh, in the chat? Well, I'm fine today, thank you very much, Karen. Um, the weather here is looking a bit grey as well, but we've got students from all over the world, so that's really making me feel exciting and invigorated, from Johannesburg to Kuwait, Edinburgh, Isle of Skye to the Isle of Wight, so lots of really interesting places, and that makes me feel that I'm actually lying on a beach somewhere sunny. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. It's nice to hear that there's other weather going on in the world today. Now, Lynn, Tell us a little bit about what you do at the Open University and, and also why you're here today. Well, I mean, I, well, what do I do at the Open University? I do so much at the Open University and students are the reason for being as far as I'm concerned. I'm the student support team lead for um, Wells. So that means I deal with a lot of student inquiries. I'm also a staff tutor on the nursing and health and social care program as well. So I'm involved in recruiting students, dealing with their queries, their questions, so many things. And I absolutely love working for the OU and I love the students that we have here. They're all fantastic and, and answering their questions and queries and helping them is uh, the reason for me coming to work each day. It's a wonderful place to work and I think that's why so many of us work for the OU because it is just such an amazing place. The students, our colleagues just fill us with so much enthusiasm. There's always something going on. We're going to find out a little bit more about that. But thank you, Lynn. And Lynn's going to be putting all of your questions to our guests. Plus, you can see she knows an awful lot. So do throw any questions to her in the chat. If there's something you'd rather not ask, you can email studenthub at open.ac.uk and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible on that. Um, but do make the most of talking to each other. The one thing, though, that we don't want you to do um, is share emails or personal information, please. So please don't do that. But every Everything else is absolutely wonderful. Now we have two other very special colleagues who are joining us in the chat, but they won't be on camera like Lynn will be. Um, and that is Joe Main and also Matt Weevil. Now they are from our student support team in Scotland and Matt's going to be collecting your tips and we're going to be sharing those on the screen because while the video asset is something that you can watch on catch up afterwards, if you miss anything, the chat all goes unfortunately and there are always so many wonderful tips that people um, add. I think one of the most meaningful things was when somebody said actually I've got this small desk that I fold up at 
the end of the table and I open it into a wonderful study space. And for somebody else who had a very small study space, this was an absolute revelation. So your tips can be anything that help you study, anything you've learned or perhaps things that you haven't even tried yet, but you're hoping to incorporate into your learning. And with that in mind, for our next event on the 1st of February, we have a competition here at Student Hub Live. We do because we finally got some wonderful merchandise and bits and bobs. So we thought we'll have a prize and we are going to be asking for your pictures of your study space. And our award categories are the most innovative study space, the most cosy study space that would definitely involve some sort of animal, we think, um, best use of a small space. And there's an everything else category as well. So please send us a picture of your study space to studenthub at open.ac.uk by the 20th of January, and we'll include it there. Now, I've got some wonderful people for you to meet. And which other university in the world would introduce you live to their leadership team. I have our Pro Vice Chancellor, Liz Ma, who's the Pro Vice Chancellor for students, um, who's going to welcome you to the university. And uh, also you might have some questions for Liz. She's always particularly interested in how students are feeling and what they're excited and anxious and nervous about. So please do let us know. Liz, welcome and thank you so much for coming along today. I know this is a very special part um, of your working week where you meet the students um, in between all the many other meetings that you've got. So how are you today and, and how's the weather where you are? Milton Keynes and I'm just looking out the window to check and it's a little bit grey but I got myself dressed nice and brightly this morning um, and noticed as I sat down here that I'm toning with my cushion covers. So got to be a good day. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. It's and very I, well and I had through yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was an accident, uh, but I had no idea that it was the most depressing day of the year today. So I have neglected to be depressed. So there you go. Absolutely. We've got to focus on the positives though, at times like these. So exactly. yes. Good, good. Now, I mentioned before that there's always something going on um, at the OU and many people join the OU thinking that they're here to learn their course online and they're so excited when they find out about all the other stuff that's going on. The OU um, is a really special institution, so I wonder if you can um, fill our new learners in on um, a little bit about the mission of the Open University and why it's such a special place to be associated with. Oh, thanks, Karen. Great opening question. and I just something I'd love to share with you all. So the, the mission for the university is, is one that I, I think is incredible that every member of staff in the university can tell you what that mission is straight off when you ask them. And I think I don't know any other organization that, that could say that. Um, so our mission is to be open, guess by the name, open to people, open to places, open to methods and open to ideas. And the open to people bit is what really attracted me to it, um, both originally as a student many, many years ago, but that then as a member of staff in uh, in more recent years. And, um, and that openness means that um, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you are. It's really nice to hear that there are people in Kuwait and the Isle of I can't remember all those places Lynn said, but you know, it doesn't matter where you are or who you are or what your prior qualifications are, there are opportunities for you with the Open University. And I think that's really special and that's what makes us very, very special. And then there's the, the Open to Places. And of course, as I've just said, Lynn mentioned all the places that people are, but there's even more interesting places than that because I know we've got students who might be submariners. So they might be doing their TMAs, their assignments while they're on, on duty in a submarine. They might be in the armed forces deployed on a base somewhere. Um, they could be in the merchant navy and sailing around the world and studying. Um, so there's, you know, places, really open to places, methods, different ways of doing things. So we can use the technology, um, you know, and the future of that is is really incredible because we've got uh, people who are working on things like virtual reality and augmented reality so that we can build those into our learning experiences for students. So loads of methods. And when you think back to those early days and the kind of late 60s, early 70s, when we first started out, uh, we just had um, black and white television at the time. And, um, and, and that was what we used. And now you can see 
you know all the different channels that we use so definitely open to methods and ideas i think that is reflected very much in a lot of the research work that the university does so um so all in all open to people places methods and ideas it stood the test of time and there's no reason why that mission should ever change in my view it is amazing when you think about all of those different aspects and, and what they really mean and how the Open University is not just a place where we're doing things at a distance because we can't be together, but we're using the best of technology for the most incredible things. I remember talking to some colleagues in law who de designed some of those augmented realities so that students could practice rehearsing a case and get real feedback from a virtual audience without all the nerve wracking things of actually being in a courtroom. So providing such an amazing experience that you couldn't get in any other way and I think myself that's what's so incredible about it but one yeah. of the things I don't think that we've had many people study and although correct me if I'm wrong is, is outer space um, because we do a lot of various things um, in terms of research etc and uh, many of our colleagues in um, STEM are involved with uh, a lot of different uh, research projects and you know building things that end up in space can you tell us a bit about some of the other exciting things that we're doing in terms of research yeah, for sure, Karen. And I, I was going to mention space um, as one of the exciting things because that just fires up the imagination. But there's loads of other stuff that we do as well, and and some on a really big scale like that, but others that are smaller scale but just as important. So, um, so for example, one of the things that um, we've got a team of people doing during the the pandemic is working with the local hospice. Um, it's called Willen Hospice and working with them uh, to create or, or to develop the digital communications to enable the end users and their families and their staff to interact more effectively and to provide better support for people. So it's a sm smaller than our space campaigns, but so important in terms of engaging people in, um, in communication and facilitating that togetherness during what is a very unhappy time for many, many people. Um, we do a huge amount in international development. So I remember when I first started that we were uh, working in um, in Africa, in sub-Saharan sub Africa, um, helping teachers, um, developing tools for teacher education that they could download on on, um, on on mobile phones. So it wasn't essential to have a signal in order to uh, to, to access it and we built on those ideas and we have um, teacher education in India now um, all kinds of programs in that area and then of course we've got the really exciting stuff that you, you see on the television so um, for example, one of our polar oceanographers um, remembered how to say that, but don't make me write it down. One of our recent, uh, one of our polar oceanographers, um, Mark Brandon, was awarded an MBE in the New Year's Honours list uh, for working on um, polar science contributions to polar science, and he actually worked with David Attenborough on um, frozen planet. That's the one, uh, and also the work that we've done on um, on Blue Planet, uh, which had a massive impact on policy in many places in the world, but also a huge impact on people's behaviours, um, and so in in terms of how they dealt with plastics, uh, and I think so we, you can see that our research is feeding into a kind of mass communication around really significant issues and changing people's behavior. And you've got to be proud of that. Really, you have to be proud of that. It's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? And um, Liz, uh, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about um, the charter as well from, from the Open University, because one of the things that I think is so important is that it's not just students coming and the Open University delivering something. There's a reciprocal relationship and responsibilities that you're expecting of students and that in return the university will do to students. And this involves ways of being and ways of learning. But I think understanding the role that that plays um, is so important in, in the fact that actually, you know, the OU is there for students yes of course and um, and the student charter is something which was developed 
completely in partnership. It's actually led by the Students Association, but working in partnership with the university to develop this charter, which kind of lays out ways that we expect people to behave and to support each other uh, and to engage in their learning. So there are, there are four principles that underpin it. And the first one of those is around treating each other with dignity and respect. The second one is about inspiring and enable learning. The third one is about um, sharing responsibility for learning so it isn't you know it isn't just the responsibility of the academic staff who produce the teaching materials or the associate lecturer that you meet you you as a student share responsibility for that and um, I can see some study tips going across the bottom of the screen there which are very useful in terms of making sure you are taking responsibility for your own learning um, and, and, and the final one is about working together to secure the mission and our values and the mission I've just talked about, of course. But I think the one that I really want to highlight, and, and the chart is reviewed annually, um, but we just did a major review this year and it's quite short, it's just on one page and I would recommend people have a look at it. Um, but the, 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 the dignity and respect thing has really come to the fore in light of many of the things that have happened through 2020 around Black Lives Matter, um, but also about the impacts of COVID and, and really the, the growth of social media, which has, I mean, this is a great example of a brilliant use of social, of a social media channel, but, um, you know, there's a, a lot of information out there, which is potentially misinformation, misleading, you know, and, and being able to, to, to think and reflect before we react um, and thinking about the impact that our behaviours have on other people um, is a really important thing for us, us to remember. Um, and so the student charter is really designed to, to, to help with that. And I don't just mean the relation, I'm not just talking about relationships between staff and students, I'm talking about relationships between staff and staff and students and students and others, of course. Um, but we're a, we're a fantastic community of people and hopefully as you, you join that community, uh, you will feel welcomed, you will feel included um, and you will be welcoming and inclusive of others. So yeah, the charter is quite a, an important document for us. Mm. Absolutely. And those social media spaces are so interesting. I've got colleagues doing some research into those and I've invited them to come along um, to our Freshers programme as well to uh, to discuss some of those issues. Um, but Liz, this sort of leads me on to my next um, and final question, um, which is around this whole idea of changing your life. You know, many students say, I can never read a newspaper in the same way again. Studying broadens your horizons and gives you these new ways of thinking. And last year, um, you, uh, when Women's Hour celebrated their um, 50th uh, years of educating Rita, you were invited um, to take part in the show. So I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about what your involvement was there. Yeah, so that was so much fun. I've got to say, at, at pinnacle of my career, being on Woman's Hour, how exciting is that? Um, with the uh, amazing Jane Garvey and also Willie Russell, the playwright, was in the same conversation. So it was, so it was all great for me. Um, yeah, it was the 50th anniversary of Educating Rita. And what struck me about the programme was the number of people who emailed in, um, sent messages about the way in which going back into education later in life had really transformed their lives. And so often what you heard from these people was that when when they were 18 or whatever, they, they, they were told university is not for the likes of you or you're a woman, what do you need to go to university for? Or, you know, you, it, it would be a waste for somebody like you because you're just going to go away and get married and, and not do anything or, you know, and, and people really being put down and and the experiences that, that those people had in terms of the way their lives were transformed and the careers that they're um, engaging in, just incredible. Um, but what the film also shows is, you know, that the, the not just the transformation that it brings about, but also the challenges of being a student. Um, and it also showed a little bit about the passion and commitment of Open University tutors, like, like uh, you know, you met Lynn just before, um, to, to their students. And I think um, uh, if you do go back and rewatch the film, your tutor is very unlikely to invite you to a dinner party. They might, but they're 
probably it's not in the what contract COVID and everything <laughs> yeah and and the other thing is they probably don't get drunk as often as uh, frank did in education research at least not while working as far as i know so um apologies to any tutors who i might have accidentally maligned in that comment <laughs> but um no that you won't experience that but you will see the passionate commitment to support that our tutors have and, and hopefully you will enjoy a, a relationship with a number of tutors over the years of your study um, that will help with that transformational experience that you have. Brilliant. And we've got a tutor, Rob Moore, who's going to be coming on um, after my next guest. But Liz Moore, thank you so much for coming along and uh, being so wonderful and, and giving students, I think, a really great start um, to meeting people at the Open University um, and also some great advice in terms of uh, knowing what they're involved with so that they can make the most of it in their studies. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. I'll be back in Freshers Week, so I'll see you all again then. And thank you very much for inviting me. Brilliant. Good luck, thank you, everybody. Liz. Thanks, Karen. So any Thank you, Liz. So any questions for Liz and Tim, our Vice Chancellor, will also be there at our Freshers Week. Do let me know. Email studenthub at open.ac.uk. And wonderful to see so many study tips coming through, um, which uh, Joe's putting on the screen for us. So do let us know what tips you've got about getting started and managing your time. Some brilliant advice there already. Lynn, how's everybody doing at home? Oh, everyone's doing really well at home and I've got some really good study tips coming through on that chat line. Um, a few questions as well about when their books will arrive and um, it's always worth noting that you don't need just your books. You can get onto that module website and everything is there, PDFs, there's lots of material there. So lots of nice chat coming out uh, through that, that box, um, Karen. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Lynn. And as Lynn says, your module website often has alternative uh, formats. So everything that you might get in a book would be there as a PDF. So you can uh, already make a start if you'd like to. Um, but we thought we'd uh, talk about some of the things that students might like to do before module starts. So I've asked Matt Staples, who is uh, a director of teaching in FAS, about what he thinks the best use of these next couple of weeks before module start um, could consist of. Uh, so welcome, Matt. How are you? Where are you? And what's the way weather like? I'm very well. I'm in North London and actually the sun was shining up until about 10 minutes ago but so it's a fairly fairly okay day actually yeah and I'm I'm excited about new students coming in uh, so I, I don't think of it as a as a down day really. I think it's quite an exciting time actually preparing for you know for the new presentations. Great. Absolutely. No, it's always really exciting when we get our new cohorts of students together. So Matt, tell us then, I mean, one of the things that students do, we've met so many people here, so many students sharing what modules they're on. Um, we all start a module at the same time and finish at the same time. There are various things that happen in between. But um, one of the things that, that's so special about the Open University is flexibility. So I wonder if you can talk us a little bit through that whole notion of students' journeys um, and really what students should see in terms of their timeline from the beginning to the end end of their first module. Yeah, no, completely. I mean, the first thing I would say is we're the biggest university in the UK, one of the biggest universities in the world, but for each student, their journey is a very individual one. So on different modules, you'll have a combination of uh, online, but how you access online. Some people can use tablets or their phones or they use a computer. Some people have a mix of books and online, you know, and how you make sense of the materials you use and your own journey is going to be a very unique one for you. And so all these sessions we're doing on Student Hub Live here and in Freshers Week is about getting enabling you to make sense of the journey from your own perspective. I think that's really important. Now, Matt, you were very involved with DD102, which is one of our most popular level one modules, um, introducing the social sciences. Um, and this has some lovely big books and they're labelled one and two. Um, and many students yeah. I know start and they get the book and they start reading it. But as you mentioned, students have different ranges of material. And I think the one thing that's conceptually important for students to understand is how the, the virtual learning environment, the, or the VLE as we like to call it, remains central, even when you've got a nice book that sort of looks like it's got a start and a middle and an end, um, that there are things that we encourage students to do as we guide them through that journey. So can you tell us a little bit yeah. about the range of materials and how students might, I guess, navigate that terrain, particularly if they do or don't have um, a book in their hands? Yeah, no, completely. Um, so at the start of each week, an Open University week starts on a Saturday at the moment. So on a Saturday morning, you go online, and you will use the VLE basically. What we've done, the virtual learning environment, we call it, 
we detail what activities you've got during the week ahead, roughly how long they're going to take, and in what order you should take them. And that's like a very supportive structure for all the students to use, regardless of the module that you're on. As I say, some will be on the VLE uh, all the time. Others will use a mix of books and the VLE. Um, and through the week, you'll encounter some text um, to read. You'll do some activities. You might listen to an audio or, or watch a video. Um, you might interact with other students on a forum. Um, it might be an assessment week, so you might be starting to write um, some material which you'll, you'll send to your tutors. But that VLE is really important. And the one thing I'd say is students are worrying at the moment now. We spend a huge amount of time getting and working through the material to make sure it fits into the week. So if you're doing a 60 point course, it's about 15 hours study. And we literally go through each piece of material and think about how long it will take you to do. And so it's manageable. That's a really important thing. We've done a lot of work, a lot of design technology to make sure that you can cope with the study ahead of you. And for each person, that 15 minutes activity might be longer or shorter, um, and there might be other things going on in people's homes. I mean, right now, for example, many people are competing um, for, for time on the computer, for example, or, or even yeah. time to think, um, depending on what's going on in one's home. So while there are these orderings of activities, um, I mean, I'm mindful that for me, I have different times of the day when I can think more clearly or less clearly. How might students yeah. meet some of those materials? Do they need to sit and be studying in their study space to be able to say, watch a video? Or could they maybe do that with their family um, or, or while they're cooking the dinner? Yeah, no, completely. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little bit of a technophobe. <laughs> um, and but I started accessing OU materials through my phone. I've just got an iPhone. I had a BlackBerry for 20 years, but I'm very excited. I've got an iPhone now and I access some of the module materials that I would use to support students via iPhone, actually with headphones on. And I can do it while I'm cooking the dinner. Other people use tablets. Other people want more bespoke time and they sit in front of their PC. And so, again, a really good kind of activity is to sit back, think about how can I develop a strategy for accessing certain things? Actually, if I'm in the car, could I listen to an audio? If I'm on the train going to work, could I watch a video? You know, do I need some quiet time to go through some more text-based material? Or could I do that on the train? And so you'll think about the week, think about the materials in front of you, and think about what pockets of time can I dedicate to that? And so actually being a reflective student is kind of sitting back and saying, how can I tackle the course? Because I'm sure everybody online today is thinking, oh, I've got a job. Some of you will have caring responsibilities. Some of you may have kids. There'll be a lot going on. When am I going to find the time to walk the dog? You know, these are all important things. You know, people's lives are busy, actually. And thinking about when you can fit OU study in is actually really important. And um, But we've, we've enabled it, you know, so that you can use different sorts of devices to access the material. And uh, I've got one of my colleagues who developed the um, OU Study app, which is where you can access your module material on your mobile yeah. phone, coming to us at the Freshers Week. So she'll be filling us in on how all of that worked. But that's a great idea, Matt. And um, one thing I just wonder if we could touch on as well is, is this whole notion of assessment, because in addition to sending everyone these materials, of course, the aim of the game is to then assess to the extent uh, to which students understand what it is that they're being taught. And this can um, quite rightly uh, meet some of us uh, with feelings of dread, especially if we haven't been in education for some time. But the important thing I think that students should recognise is that the assessment really, really counts at, at level three or towards the end of your qualification. At level one, you need to pass, you need to understand things and this is your time to make plenty of mistakes and really learn but nonetheless there there are assessments and these are all scaffolded to develop in complexity but also to to ensure that students have a chance to succeed so that they know if they're not understanding things and they can go back to those areas before i guess it's too late and you end up at level three thinking crikey i don't know how to write an essay because i've missed all of those bits so it's there to support yeah. students but can you tell us a little bit about how in terms of your role as director of teaching, how that sort of links to the curriculum and also how it links in terms of the levels as these things get harder and students progress. Yeah, no, very much so. So when we design a qualification, um, say a, a degree in social sciences, we think what skills do we want students to end up with at the end of that qualification? And then we kind of plan backwards. 
And so thinking about what do they need at level one in order to get to level two? What do they need at level two to get to level three? We scaffold the assessment and we scaffold the skills to support that assessment. So at level one, and it's really important to remember this, remember this if any students are worried about all oh, failing their first TMA or not doing as well as, uh, as they would hope to. Level one, the first 120 points you do, it doesn't count to your degree classification. It's only at level two and three that whether you get a two one or a first or a two two, that 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 the uh, assessments you uh, get and the scores, that impacts on your degree. At level one, it's really an opportunity for you to learn skills uh, of academic writing, and academic engagement in a kind of relatively stress-free environment obviously everybody wants to do as well as they can but we've designed it so it's very clearly scaffolded so you do a piece of work you get the skills to support it that piece of work and the learning outcomes from from the work you've done will then support the next piece of work and so it's kind of cumulative and very clearly stepped it's like I suppose at the top of Kilimanjaro, I guess, is, is the end of your degree. But we, you know, take you through it very, very slowly. And so we're doing the foothills in level one. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's probably and, and quite a held... poor analogy, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes it does feel like climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, I think. Certainly sometimes in terms of length. But trust me, it goes a lot sooner than you think it will, those, uh, those it years it of does. studying. Absolutely. No, so um, we're going to introduce everyone to an associate lecturer next um, who's going to talk us through um, all of um, aspects in terms of how they help you with assessment. But Matt, I just wonder if you could sort of briefly touch on some of the support services and areas the university have, because often they see academics as very much the front face of the university, but we have so many other areas of support that students use. And also you integrate those in terms of building a qualification, being mindful of things like library services and careers, mm -hmm. while you're actually looking looking at how we teach students um, a, a set of curriculum. So can you fill us in a little bit on those areas of support and why they're so important? Yeah, no, very much so. Again, it's a 360 operation at the Open University. We don't just give you the materials and kind of leave you to get onto it, uh, kind of on with it, really. We've got, I mean, you've got my colleagues from the Open University in Scotland providing the student support function today uh, for this session. And so across the UK, we've got offices. And so we have a student support team in Scotland, Wales, Ireland and in England and you would call them if you you know if you've got something you want to you know talk through with them we've got the ALs who mark your work provide your tutorials and are often you know the first point of call if you've got a uh, an issue or question with the module and are available on you know during the week for you to you know to, for you to talk to um, but then we have services like the career service and employability and so we have a you know you, you, you can ring through and ask for a, a interview with a careers advisor, for example, and talk about what are your aspirations? What do you want to do with your degree? You might think about changing your career. So they're there for you. We've got a library service, which is second to none. You know, be able to access books electronically. Um, if you've got a query about how to use uh, materials, um, they do a lot of uh, a lot of very good activities about um, how to search the internet uh, and how to access library services. You know how to use search engines. So there's a huge amount of support from the library as well. Um, and then we have the, the computer help desk. If you've got problem accessing open university services online, you know there's somebody available. You know I think pretty much seven days a week actually uh, for you to talk to as well about you know how how to get through and and how to access things. And so it's not just about the module we provide a wraparound to ensure that you really are very well supported at the university that's 50 years of experience about how to best support students in an online environment or in a distance environment brilliant well matt that's been absolutely wonderful thank you so much for coming on what meetings have you to look forward to this afternoon well because i'm director of teaching i'm actually writing reports we have external advisors who are academics from other universities and they're expert advisors looking at the modules that we put on at the university and so they've all fed back um, for, uh, 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 their views about how we performed last year and I'm writing back to them generally it's a very good news story they're very happy with what we're doing they said we performed really well in Covid and so I'm responding to them this afternoon brilliant oh well thank you Matt all the best with that and uh, thank you for coming along today no worries take care everybody good luck Thank you. So, everybody at home, then, how are things going? I hear that some people are finding.
asking us. One of the things is it, it can be, this is a, a full on show and we only have an hour today at our freshest event. We'll be here pretty much all day. I'm hoping some of you will join me um, for some of those sessions and into the evening as well. Um, but the important thing I think right now is this, that there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to take in, a lot of this will be repeated. While we're here showing you about the university, all of this will be explained in the first weeks of study and in our freshers events, etc. So don't feel like this is the only opportunity. Plus, we've obviously got the catch up as well. Um, so you can always go back and watch that. So if you just like to hang out and chat with everyone in the chat room, that's absolutely fine. You can come back and watch the recording a little bit later. And if you do miss things on the chat, there's a little pin button at the top of that so that you can pause the chat and scroll down perhaps to see uh, some of the things that said. Um, so don't we don't need to take part in everything here. Just enjoy it and, and take what's there for you and know that there are other things that we're going to be doing um, to support you in your journey. Today's program really is about saying hello and to tell you what's in store so that when you start meeting some of these things, you'll know. And I'm very pleased that Daniel recommends the um, Being an OU Student app. Uh, so, sorry, Being an OU Student Bok. We're going to find out a little bit more about that in just a moment. But before I do, let me go back to Lynn and see um, what the state of the nations are. How's everyone, Lynn? I think everyone's doing very well. I think you're quite right, Karen, that some people are finding it hard to listen and to chat and do everything. So I would want to say to them, just chill. Don't worry that this isn't an ass assignment so they can just watch what's going on or you can just chat as well. Um, it really doesn't matter. And, and of course, you have got that Freshers Week coming up as well. Um, and someone, Linda, came up with a really good question. She said, at what stage of the module is the best time to read the assignment question? I think that that's really good because that just to me illustrates how your brain can work on lots of different levels and whilst you're studying the materials if you've read the questions somehow your brain is in the background just working away at that question putting things into little um, envelopes and storing things away so um, there's no right or wrong way of doing things so I would just be saying to everybody just find what works for you Absolutely. Some people really like, I'm one of those people who I like knowing the things that are ahead, whereas other people like um, putting things to one side and dealing with them as and when. So as you say, we all do different things. There's no right or wrong way. Um, but the one thing I would say is, is that while we've got module start day and we have events on module start day, it's a nice slow ease into it all. Um, in fact, so slow that some students um, uh, don't quite make a start at the right time. So we do run a little catch up session for them as well. But if you're on a level one module, they're all designed to start nice and slowly um, so there's plenty of time for you to learn something new because of course this is a whole different world here and um, there are lots and lots of different things and nobody expects anybody to know everything or be an expert which is why we have so many forums where you can contact people um, and meet other students on your module we have our student support team and all of the other services like careers and the library and the computing help desk etc to help you make a start and get everything up and running um, and we also have our wonderful tutors or associate lecturers Lecturers. So let us meet one now. We have uh, the lovely Rob Moore, who does some of our Student Hub Live Adobe Connect workshops. Rob, how are you? Where are you? And what's the weather doing? <laughs> Hi, Karen. Um, I'm very well, thank you. I'm sat here in Misham, uh, so just outside Ashby de la Zouche. So uh, yeah, it's not too bad at the moment, a little bit grey, but at least it's dry, which is quite good. Brilliant. Now, Rob, I wanted to talk to you um, about a few things. The first one is um, about tutors. And I've been sort of saying that, you know, tutors work with students in terms of their assessment. And the OU have a very unique model whereby a question is set and then that's marked by your tutor who may um, have a group of maybe 15 to 25 students or so, depending on the module. Um, and they mark your work and, and feed things back to you um, and also provide you with some tuition, um, sometimes in groups. Um, so there are online tutorials that you can go to. But this relationship is quite special because the tutorial groups are big enough for a tutor to have a range of students, but also small enough for you to get quite a nice relationship going with your students. So what can you tell us about that relationship, Rob, and any advice you might have for our new students about how they might want to contact their tutor when they are allocated one? Okay, so you're absolutely right. We have somewhere between 15 and 20 students, depending on the size of the group. Uh, we look after a range of interactions, so it does depend on the type of module you're doing and uh, and the subject. So, for example, in some of the modules I work on, 
Uh, there is a forum where we post questions that the students can work on and they can discuss the questions, discuss the answers, and we'll give a bit of guidance. Uh, quite often those questions will be built to help you understand what's needed in the assessment. Uh, other times we have activities, so on, on one module I'm on, um, the group is doing a simulation and it's, it's like a big game that they do for a month and then they discuss their results and what they've learned from it. Uh, we also use the forums to give as much advice as we can about uh, how to approach the assignment, how to develop the skills. We don't expect students to immediately be brilliant at everything. Uh, I'm sure others cover this as well, but we expect you to build up your skills and your abilities as you move through your studies. So particularly if this is your first time with the OU, the tutor is there to help you develop those skills. And we give quite specific individual feedback on what you need to do. So as a tutor, I might give uh, some general feedback that would cover um, a general point for a whole group. But I also give very specific advice to individual students. And if needed, we'll arrange a single individual session where we will focus on a particular area. Um, so the feedback is very much tailored to you as a student. Brilliant. And as you say, we don't expect students to be brilliant. Um, in fact, they're here to learn. So we expect them to not be brilliant at all, but um, to have certain skills that they will then work hard at um, on with their tutor. Um, and I guess one of those things is that, you know, if we want to learn, then we need to invest that time. And you don't learn anything unless you make lots of mistakes. So uh, level one is certainly a time for doing a lot of that. Now, Rob, um, we have a competition. I don't know if you've heard about our competition for Freshers Week, uh, where we have different categories um, of study spaces for students um, and we've had some wonderful tips about getting stationary and organizing things um, one of our uh, study space uh, categories is coziest space and best use of a small space because some OU students don't have the luxury of a desk even um, but it's important to think about a space to study and that can very much be a conceptual space as much as a physical space what's your take then on the space issue and, and setting up that place for people's study okay so First of all, there is no such thing as the right place for everyone or the right space for everyone. We're individuals and we will approach things in different ways. So my first piece of advice is listen to lots of people, see what they find works for them and then try it for yourself um, because you need to find what's right for you. Um, so I tend to find I have two spaces. I have a thinking space where I can go and relax and I can be creative. And then I have a more productive space, which is a little bit more technical, where I can get things and be a bit more detail focused. So that's the way I like to do it. Um, having somewhere that is right for you is important. So do you need complete quiet? Do you like somewhere with music? Um, having somewhere without any distractions is really useful. So finding somewhere that you can associate with your study. So you know it's a separate time. So just kicking your feet up on the sofa and studying wouldn't be a good idea for me. It's, there's nothing special about it. So make it your, your space to study or your, your places. I know I've got a, a shed outside that I like to go and be creative in, and I've got a, an office upstairs that is all set up with the, with the screens and the printers and the scanners and that sort of thing. Some people find the kitchen table with a nice view. I've even been known to drive to a beach and sit there with a, a lovely view in the car and work in the back of the car sometimes. So I don't think there are any rules on the right and wrong places, but having a dedicated place is quite important. Absolutely. And uh, the prizes we have for our competition are a range of new hot off the press Student Hub Live merchandise, which I don't think there'll be any surprises to those of you who've been to Student Hub Live before that these consist mainly of stationery. Uh, but we have some lovely stationery and things and addition, in addition to um, adoration from your peers um, and a feature on the show as well, we'll pop some of that in the post out to you as well. So email us your study space at studenthub at open.ac.uk. And for those of you who come 
to our Adobe Connect study skills workshops, you'll know that we have lots of uh, study buddies and tummy buddies, which are things we eat, not animals, but the study buddies tend to be animals. Um, and we show all of our pets before the session as well. Um, so you'll get familiar with that if you come along to our workshops that we've got for new starters on the 30th of January. One of them is on time management, um, but we do spend a lot of time um, talking about our lovely pets and how they can help us in our studies as well. Very, very important. My dogs have been banned though today because um, I got this little puppy in lockdown um, who's ever so sweet, but uh, <laughs> it's fighting time now. So they've had to uh, to go elsewhere and, and fight on their own together. Right, Rob, this um, BOC, it's a badged open course um, and it's, it's uh, about being an OU student. And this is perhaps one of the best things that people can do in their weeks prior to module start because um, as uh, Daniel said, he loved doing it um, and it, it answered mm -hmm. many of the questions that he already had. And you were involved in writing this. So briefly tell us a little bit about this and, uh, and why it's so good for students to actually take the time offline from this situation to, to, to work through something like that. Okay, well, the, the idea behind the um, being an OU student course is that it, it's a simple way of answering those questions that students have in the first three or four months of the course. Um, as a tutor, uh, working on level one, there are a range of questions that people quite legitimately come and ask. Where do I find um, the assessment? How do I submit an assessment? How do I find my module? Who do I talk to? Um, this is, these are all the sorts of questions that once you've learned to talk OU and you become indoctrinated, you will know instinctively after about four months. But they're the questions that you ask right at the beginning. And this, this short course is created to answer those questions. Um, you can use it either as a course to work through start to finish or just as a frequently asked questions um, resource where you can pop in and get the answer to questions. Um, it's not meant to stop you talking to your tutor. It's just a way of allowing you to find the answers on your own and um, get set up up front. It also gives some really nice advice on some of the, uh, the extras you get as an OU student. So there's some advice on how to get your Office 365 account and how to get your totem card, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm missing mine now. I've stopped. Uh, I'm not studying at the moment, so my, I haven't got my totem card. But being able to walk into McDonald's and get your free McFlurry is really good. Um, plus, there's a whole range of discounts. Um, I managed to save over two hundred pounds on a computer using my um, my totem card. Um, so totem, it's the the NUS card. It's the discount card that uh, any um, university students can get, and um, really helpful. So Brilliant. the, the course has got advice on some... Card. Sorry. Oh, you've got yours at the moment still. <laughs> I got this is Coco, my little one. She's she's um <laughs> looks super sweet, but uh but deep down she can be a complete gremlin at times. Now I love my totem card. I get um I get ten percent off at the co-op, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's always absolutely brilliant. So we've talked about that downloading Office three six five, which is again a main thing because many students use that for their assignments and assessments, and of course you get an email that you can then use to get your totem card in as well. Now the one last thing I just wanted to talk about, Rob, and we do have a specific workshop um, on this, but it's planning your time. We've mentioned about finding chunks of time throughout the day. What's your number one take home top tip about planning your time? OK, so time management um, or planning your time is also covered in in that short course. And there are some links to some planners. But the most important thing I, I would say is make sure you know what time you're going to use. Don't assume that you will just fit it in naturally. Um, successful students have a, have time set aside each week and they know when they're going to focus on their studies. It, you don't have to follow a rigid pattern that other people use. Again, find the one that suits you. Early in the morning, late at night, lots of study at the weekend or a little bit each day. Lots of different approaches work for different people. But if you haven't planned it in, you have very little chance of doing it. So have a plan. Be prepared to adjust it and modify it as you go forward. But the chances of fitting things in if you haven't got a plan are quite remote. And you will always be playing catch up. And I think the time is the thing that I didn't appreciate when I started studying. It was 
how much time it was going to take and making sure I'm allowed for that. So mm. be aware how much time you need for your course and make sure you've got time set aside to do it because that way you've got a lot more chance of actually getting things in on time and enjoying your course. You, you won't enjoy your studies if it is always rushing up against a deadline and you're always in a panic. The, the plan is going to allow you to take the time you need and enjoy, well, enjoy your study and enjoy the time you spend doing it. Brilliant. And of course, you know, sometimes plans go wrong. If you don't have a plan, you've got zero chance of sticking to the plan. But if you do have a plan and it does go wrong, sometimes um, I know students are talking about, you know, really struggling, feeling motivated right now in January, the students who um, are already partway through their studies. Um, and I know that one thing they found really helpful is talking to their tutor who knows the content, who can say, actually, maybe you don't need to do this, but you can prioritise these things. So tutors are great at helping make plans. And of course, our colleagues at the student support team are also really good people if you just are feeling like it's all getting a bit much they can really help you to, to make sense of some of those things and prioritize the good things rob thank you so much for coming along today <laughs> and uh, you can meet rob at our um, student hub live adobe connect workshops uh, he uh, is involved with that alongside isabella and myself um, so i do hope that you can check some of those out we've got some including time management as we said before on the day of module start rob have a lovely rest of the afternoon all right. Thank you, Karen. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Right. Bye -bye. So let's go back to Lynn and see how everybody is doing back at home. How's everybody? Everyone's doing really well. I've got some very interesting discussions about where people study. I personally want to go and see Valerie's um, uh, study area because it's uh, apparently a 70s, 70s to 80s retro room. So that sounds very interesting. Not quite sure if that will be good on the eyes. Um, <laughs> Daniel said it was really nice to see a tutor in person. They are real people. It's quite strange, really. Um, so they are re real people. And uh, he was quite you know, pleased to see somebody in the room. Lots of chat about McFlurries, which um, sounds quite interesting, is making me feel quite hungry. And Beverly has said she's got a very clever cat who types for her. So um, I'm not quite sure, Karen, if your dog's up to those skills or any of your dogs are up to the skills of typing. Um, but maybe we should uh, give them a go. Well, I don't know. This one's trying to dig underneath the cushion right now, so I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Yes, yeah, she's uh no. I mean, they're they're just very good at looking cute, and then they they sit there all quiet and and snore away as as only cocker spaniels do, and that makes me really tired when I'm trying to work sometimes. But uh, no, I wouldn't let them near the computer keyboard. They they're ruthless with that. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you, Lynn, for doing such an amazing job on the on the chat tab as well and, and keep uh, everybody talking about those things. Um, I know there's some questions about things like Office 365. If we, there's anything that we haven't been able to answer, um, do email studenthub at open.ac.uk. We try and answer all questions, but sometimes there are things that uh, we don't know the answers to. So if there is anything that you've either put in the chat or that we've somehow missed or that we don't know an answer to, then please do email and we will make um, our most concerted efforts to get back to you as soon as we possibly can um, with somebody who does know because we're very well connected. So with that in mind, I'm going to introduce you to my final guest for today, um, who is uh, perhaps one of our most important guests as a student herself and as president of the Open University Students Association, Sarah Jones. Sarah, welcome. How are you? Where are you? What's the weather doing? Hi. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, I would like to say I'm sat in sunny Bristol, but it's grey and miserable and yeah <laughs> oh but your hair looks superb sarah and uh and it looks Thank very you. uh very bright and and uh spring-like so yes <laughs> update your yesterday are especially you? for today Pardon? Oh. are you homeschooling oh yeah yes yes <laughs> yeah. i'm having it's a break, a break quite from a that <laughs> yeah yeah, the boys are currently, well, they were a minute ago in a whole school assembly. Um, so goodness knows what they're doing right this very minute because my husband's working behind me as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Challenging times. We've been talking yes. in a lot of our management meetings and um, overseeing some of the modules about the various things that have been, you know, difficult for students and just reflecting on how these lockdowns, whilst they've all been lockdowns, have presented different challenges. And um, as somebody yes. who's trying to homeschool as well as look after other things, um, I must say, I, I do really appreciate some of these challenges that are really having an impact yeah. on people now, I think, in ways Massive that perhaps impact. they weren't before. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, 
It really yeah. is. And I think this time it's very it's different as well because the government have now mandated how much time kids need to be working. So if you're in key stage one, they have to have three hours of work a day. Key stage two, it has to be four hours. Key stage three, it has to be five hours. And, you know, it's an hour of English, an hour of maths, an hour of something else. And it's kind of, it's quite regimented this time, whereas last time it, there was a lot more fluidity to it um, and a lot less pressure on parents. Um, but I think this time the pressure on parents is quite, is quite high. And it's, it's, I mean, you know, I was just reflecting on listening to what Rob was saying about time management with my studies. You know, if I don't actually block out time, this is when I'm going to study you know, it, it just doesn't happen. I'd locked out, I'd taken a day off work last week to study, thinking the kids would be back at school and they weren't. So that went out the window. So I'm going to have to sort of replan when and where I study to fit around homeschooling and work. And I know yeah. there's so many other students in the same position. So it's it's a challenge, definitely. It is, and one that I think the university are very aware of. And um, I think while it makes uh, open university study look positively easy in comparison, <laughs> equally, often it's the thing we're doing for ourselves. And sometimes those are the things that we're quite likely to give up when we want our children to succeed. Um, but equally, Absolutely. I've heard so many people saying, actually, and I know you've said this as well, I'm doing this so that my children can see that I can succeed and that I'm able to do this. So it presents a lot of conflicts, doesn't it, Sarah? It does, definitely. It really, really does. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm studying at master's level, um, which I think on reflection, if I'd, re hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I think if I'd realised that we were going to go into another lockdown like this, I probably wouldn't have taken on this level of study. But I, it really helps me to understand how the rest of the student population is dealing with this. And so I can empathise more. But I think the university are certainly being very, very mindful of what students are going through at the moment and trying desperately hard to put things in place to support students. Um, and I think they're doing a really great job with that. Mm. No, absolutely. No, they really are. And one of the, the things that you do, Sarah, is, is in your role as president, you bring the student voice, student concerns to the university. So it's very important yes. that you're aware of all of the things that are going on. Um, yeah. And you, you do this through a range of different ways. But I know that you wanted to talk today about really making the most of this special time um, and really getting involved for students and some of the things that they may or may not want to do, recognising, of course, that some people just want to head down and study, whereas other yeah. people think, Oh, a baking club. <laughs> that could be good. Yes. So tell us a little bit about um, some of the things that the association provides for students. And, and maybe we can take a quick look at the website and see where students can find out about some of these things, including the totem card, which Rob mentioned earlier, giving great yes. discounts. Of which I have dug mine out. So good, I good. still have mine. In. <laughs> yeah. And when I'm about out and about, I will use it again. But there's lots of things <laughs> online that you can use it for. And it's it's really great to have. Um, on the, on the um, Students Association website, we have so many different things that students can get involved in. Um, this is the, the home page and you can go through there's tabs along the top um, that have lots of different um, things on. They've got things about COVID-19. They've got video, they've got latest news. They've got upcoming events. They've got things about volunteering, different support things that we can that we can offer, um, and also things about we've got our shop, which is also really important. Um, and we've got things ways you can volunteer. We have an awful lot of volunteers who get an awful lot out of supporting students through different things that they do. Um, but our clubs and our societies and our meetups. This is this is a place where we can build community, and this is really important. And this is this is a place that you'll probably find your tribe. Um, you know, there's there's craft club, there's um, there's a reading group. You know, there's loads of different things. So have a nosy through, and I think that's one of the most important things that I could recommend from me. Is I was one of those students who just wanted to get her head down, didn't want to get involved in anything. Then I discovered the website and got a little bit nosy and now I'm student association president. So it can kind of suck you in. Um, volunteering is something that we hold a lot of pride in. Um, we have various ways of volunteering, including being reps on all the um, things like boards of study that investigate, um, uh, that look at how um, through the governance procedures of the university, how um, 
modules are going so you can put your student voice in there and I think that's something that's really important as a student is to develop your student voice and these are ways that you can develop your student voice so you know go in and have a nosy around there's also there's a link on the front as well to the hoot which is our magazine um and there will be a link going up I either went up yesterday or going up today um, to show our Freshers micro site. So as long as well as the Student Hub Live things that are going on, we've also got some a, a lot of really great Freshers events where you can meet other students. And again, you might be able to find somebody that you can really relate to. Um, in our support section, there's a lot about our groups like our Disabled Students group and our LGBTQ plus group, which is it, on the website currently it says Plexus, but they've just been rena renamed to OU Pride. Um, so there's there's lots to get involved in. Um, and I highly recommend having a nosy around and seeing seeing what you can find. There's links on there um, to the totem card right on the front page. There's a link straight to the totem card. You'll be able to find out how you can get to it. Um, within the shop, there are post -ex past exam papers. Um, that are really important for some maths and STEM students. Uh, so they're all there and they're free. And there's OU branded merchandise, so you can wear a wonderful OU hoodie. There's stationery, as I know students are really, really kind of into. So go ahead, have a nosy around and see what you can find. Brilliant. No, it's amazing. Amazing. There's so much there on our the society is brilliant. I um, mean, having worked with some like the um, uh, the yeah. psychology society um, and the law society who, who put on great moots in various sessions, there's lots yeah. there that can support you in your studies um, or be alongside your Absolutely. studies as well. So that's wonderful. Now, I'd like you to end then, if we could, Sarah, by um, your piece of advice for new students. There's some students here who, who, as we say, a lot of people are homeschooling um, and a lot of people um, are really super excited as well about their studies. What's your take home message for students today? And, and what do you think that they might best do um, in the couple of weeks now that they've got before their modules officially begin? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath remember to be kind to yourself we're living in really weird times at the moment and we've got to manage things that we wouldn't normally have to manage studying for me is so exciting learning and just you know discovering different things is really important to me um, and make and i think really it's it's about making that time finding that dedicated space, setting aside the time and sticking to it. Um, and most of all, try and enjoy it. Don't, don't get bogged down. If you start to get bogged down, talk to your tutor. That's what they're there for. But at the end of the day, be kind to yourself and don't be afraid to say, I'm struggling. I think that's really, really important and just kind of try and enjoy it. It's brilliant. Studying with the OU is one of the best things I ever did. My dad studied with the OU. I've studied with the OU. I'd love it if my kids studied with the OU. You know, I think I think it's a fantastic and supportive organisation. And there's so much there that you can access. But remember, be kind to yourself and just give yourself that kind of that space to go. Ah, I can do this. Absolutely, Sarah. Oh, wonderful words there. Thank you so much for coming along today. And I'm looking forward Thank to seeing you. you at our Freshers' Fair as well in a couple of weeks' time. Yes. Yeah, Thank brilliant. You. Thank you so much. All Thank right, you, take Sarah. care. Thank you. And you. See you soon. So See as soon. Sarah bye said, bye. there's plenty of support there for you um, as an OU student. Um, the flexibility is absolutely wonderful, but so is the compassion and kindness um, and just stuff that you'll get out there. There's nothing that uh, the OU won't have heard before. So, um, yeah, if things are feeling quite tricky with all this homeschool malarkey going on, um, if things do change in terms of your circumstances, etc., just know that the first thing you can do is reach out. Um, ideally, to your tutor, they'll always point you in the right direction but never be alone although it's distance learning we certainly don't want you to feel um, that you're ever at a distance from from any of us as you can see you can log online and connect very instantly um, and there are lots of opportunities for you to be able to do so well let's take a final uh, quick return to Lynn on our hot desk who's been doing a wonderful job in addition with our other advisors Lynn how, how are we all feeling now 
I think everyone is feeling very positive and very upbeat and reading the messages there are some really lovely ones there. Um, there was somebody right back at the beginning that said thank you to you because the cello in your background shows that or has reminded them that they need to do their cello practice. So um, that's quite funny. I hope they're going to go and do some cello practice after this session finishes <laughs> today. I certainly um, need to do my cello practice which I didn't do yesterday. <laughs> so I'm behind. Get out there and do it then. But no, some really lovely messages messages and some very positive things and of course the one thing I had forgotten about was that some people choose to homeschool so how about that some of our students um, who are doing the OU study and as well as homeschooling through choice so that's a very interesting that I want to take away with me from from today but I think my feeling is I'm so envious about all the excitement that, that our lovely students have got to look forward to so um, I think a lot of positivity out there it may be blue Monday but I think we've made it um, we've managed to make it into smiley Monday in instead. Oh, I think so, Lynn. That's absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you for being on our hot desk. Thank you as well um, for everybody else who supported the show and Joe and Matt who've been on our hot desk also. Um, and thank you to our fantastic production team who make all of this happen. And of course, the OU for putting these events on. As I've said, we've got lots of other um, wonderful things lined up for you. And I hope you've enjoyed today. Do check out our Student Hub Live website and make sure that you get your free ticket to the events that are of interest. We only advertise them three months uh, sorry, three weeks even before each event is there, but we do have a very full program. So we have a mailing list that you can join, just add your email to that, and then you can be the first to find out when new events are published. But these are some that we have in store for you, which I'm very much hoping you'll be able to attend. So thank you everyone today. Thank you all so much for sharing your wonderful advice and enthusiasm. I'm gonna take the dogs for a walk and I'm gonna do my cello practice. And I hope that you can join me and for our workshops on the 30th of January and our Freshers event on the 1st of February. Bye for now and thanks for watching.